July 20th, 1969 will forever live on in history as one of the most important dates in human existence. This is the day that American astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins landed on the moon for the first time. This adventure was one small step for man, yet one giant leap for mankind, as it plunged us into a future in which anything was possible. The phrase, the sky's the limit, now held little meaning, as there were footprints on the moon. The successful Apollo 11 mission is still one of the greatest achievements in the history of mankind, but it also remains one of the greatest achievements in planetary travel. This mission led to five additional moon landings in the following years. However, after Eugene Siernan and Harrison Schmidt left the moon for the final time in 1972, no one would ever venture back to the moon again. It seems as though as quickly as the space race had begun, it had ended. In today's video, we'll take a deeper look into the moon landings and try to understand why international space agencies have not sent humans back to the surface of the Earth's natural satellite for more than 50 years. We'll do our best to shed light on the complex reasoning behind this topic and look for several reasons why the lunar lull has taken a lot longer than we could have ever anticipated. Let us know, if you were able to board a spaceship and go anywhere in the galaxy, where would you go and why? Let us know in the comments below. History of the Apollo 11 Mission Before we address the actual question of this video, we should first ask ourselves why the date of July 20th, 1969 was chosen to be the first day humankind would set foot on a foreign planet. To understand this, we need to consider the historical context of this moment in time. As those of you interested in history probably already know, the decades around the Apollo 11 mission were filled with talk about the infamous Cold War that had been raging on. This war took place over many years and was largely taking place between the United States and Soviet Russia for a variety of reasons. Although there never was a direct military conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union, the two countries were nonetheless linked by a deep hatred for one another as the United States continued to fight off the ideologies of communism. To make things worse, there were proxy wars in Korea, Vietnam, and Afghanistan. The United States and Russia had split themselves among their many enemies and allies and threatened to drag the entire world into World War III. Thankfully, it didn't get this far. The unimaginable conflict between United States capitalism and Soviet Union communism was not limited to simple military confrontations either. It ran much deeper than that. Accordingly, the governments of both great countries were anxious to outdo their enemy in every conceivable field, including the idea of space travel. The consequences of this were, among other things, a large-scale arms race, concealed secret service missions behind enemy lines, and competition in the economic realm. However, the Cold War was soon to subside, and the United States, by some definitions, would arise victoriously. As part of the so-called space race, both nations tried to triumph over their enemy in the newfound world of space travel. When the Soviet Union first succeeded in the fall of 1957 by sending an artificial satellite into space, and a few weeks later even sending a living being, a dog, into space, both the American people and the leading politicians in the United States were in a state of shock. The successful Soviet missions caused American jaws to hit the floor, as the missions were not only successful, but were completed far ahead of schedule, leaving Americans in the Russian wake, grasping at every possible chance to catch up with the competition. While the previous NASA projects mostly ended in devastating failures, it was now time to demonstrate America's technological superiority by sending the first human to the surface of the moon. As we all know today, this endeavor succeeded in 1969, whereby the USA could finally win the so-called space race. A lack of cash and a lack of motivation. This brings us to one of the first big reasons there have not been any further moon landings in the last few decades. As you can probably understand, the leaders of the United States during the Cold War were more than happy enough to have supported NASA's space missions with all the funds they could possibly find. However, after the hatred of Russia and their allies began to die down over the years, everyone who was responsible for sending a human to the moon lost interest in the subject. 
After all, the deed had been done, and they were successful in their attempts to send mankind into a new era of innovation and technology. For the first time ever, a human had successfully left our planet, traveled to the moon, and returned safely to Earth. While NASA was still being heavily funded throughout the 1960s and 70s, their budget began to dwindle as the years passed by. They had previously been given access to about 4% of the total national budget, but after completing the space race successfully, funds needed to be reallocated and their budget would be brought down to just 1%. This was a devastating blow to NASA and left them with little resources to conduct any follow-up missions. At the end of it all, their budget had been cut once again to just 0.4% of the national budget. Since the moon landings required disturbing amounts of funds and investments to keep things safe for the astronauts, the space agency staff were no longer able to carry out any more manned missions to the moon or any other planets. The limited financial resources put an end to the project almost as quickly as it had begun, and it seemed like other countries would soon follow suit. According to estimates made by experts in the field, another moon landing would cost the United States somewhere around $130 billion. However, a lack of financial assistance from the government almost secures the idea that this will never happen. Considering the dire circumstances the world is in at the moment, it seems unlikely we'll see another moon landing anytime soon. This is also why we've never left our planet again in the last 50 years. The Consequences of Intense Radiation Exposure what we often forget about when reporting the success of the astronauts on the moon is the physical damage it caused to their bodies as they passed through the radiation belt in space and managed to report back to Earth. Considering how unknown outer space was at the time, it's honestly a surprise that the astronauts even managed to make it back to Earth with their lives intact. There are large amounts of radiation in outer space. This means the astronauts were exposed to unknown levels of radioactivity during their time in the spacecraft, which could have caused serious health issues for them when they returned to Earth, if they ever made it back. The moon itself is also quite radioactive, so when they left the confines of the spaceship, they were doing so at their own risk and putting their lives in extreme danger. Due to the atmosphere of Earth, our planet serves as somewhat of a protective barrier for the radiation that flows all throughout outer space. Without this natural layer of protection, however, NASA astronauts were exposed to significantly higher levels of radiation after leaving our atmosphere. The astronauts that were part of the Apollo 14 mission in 1971 were exposed to about six times the amount of radiation that were exposed to on Earth in a given year. All of this exposure took place within about nine days. The harmful effects of space radiation manifested themselves in the form of severe vomiting, dizziness, and disorders that affect the nervous system. However, the risks of radiation exposure do not end there, and many astronauts have had to pay a serious price for being involved in the space program. According to some of the astronauts, the incredibly high levels of radiation had devastating effects on their bodies. For example, some NASA astronauts would later develop cancer, heart disease, and have issues with their sight many years after they left the program. Research into the devastating effects of radiation exposure in outer space has still yet to be fully explained. Lord, meaning we have no idea what may happen to these brave souls many years after their mission has been completed. Moon Dust, a major health hazard. In addition to the high radiation from space, there is another major health risk that astronauts are faced with when landing on the surface of the moon, moon dust. The dust on the surface of the moon differs significantly from the dust we're exposed to here on Earth. Since there's no wind or rain on the moon, the dust particles on the moon's surface are never filed down, meaning they're razor sharp and ready to wreak serious havoc on your lungs, throat, and nostrils if you're not wearing a top-of-the-line mask. This dust sticks to everything, including the suits of the astronauts, their skin, their eyes, and everything in between. The particles are known to be 50 times smaller than human hair, meaning they can settle in the astronauts' lungs and remain there for many months. The damage caused by these particles is no joke and has since been referred to as moon hay fever. Astronauts will remain sick for the better part of a year before their bodies learn to fight off these harmful toxins. Accordingly, all 12 of the astronauts who stepped on the surface of the moon throughout the missions carried out by NASA have complained about having serious lung issues, blocked areas, and sneezing attacks that lasted for many months. 
We don't know what these dust particles may do long term, but some experts and doctors believe that moon dust can lead to serious health complications and irreparable lung damage. Logistical Efforts and Supply Problems Apart from the major health issues that plague astronauts who have been to the moon, there are also some logistical problems that prevent us from returning, and these issues cannot be underestimated. Simply launching a rocket from the surface of the Earth is a major expense that NASA simply doesn't have the funds to do unless it's absolutely necessary. The thrust required to push a rocket from the surface of the Earth is roughly 15 times that of a normal aircraft that can take us across the planet. A rocket a rocket is known to devour up to six tons of fuel within a single second, and this fuel comes at an incredible cost. It's also remarkably complicated for an astronaut to cover the distance between the Earth and the Moon on a single tank of fuel. Also, keep in mind, they have to have enough fuel to return as well. A total of 384,400 kilometers must be covered both ways, meaning it's extremely expensive to fuel a rocket of this size. Because of this, the rockets are usually designed to level out in orbit once they gather enough momentum to soar the rest of the way to the Moon without using Using fuel after leaving the Earth's atmosphere, of course. Taking care of the astronauts who are on board the spacecraft is also incredibly tricky, since there are obviously no stops that can be made along the way to uncharted territory. This means launching a rocket to the moon with enough food and water to sustain the astronauts for more than a week can be very difficult, and the unspoilable food that the astronauts must eat throughout their mission has to be carefully designed and prepared for the journey. This alone costs many millions of dollars. Do we already know everything about the Moon? Another obvious reason we've not been back to the Moon is that we simply don't need to. Previously, we had traveled to the Moon so that we could learn more about it, its orbit around the Earth, and what the Moon is made of. For the most part, we now know these things and there's virtually nothing left to know about the Moon. This means it would be difficult to justify the expense of space travel if it isn't going to further humanity in any real way. Will we go back to the moon? As it stands, NASA has announced that they plan to put humans back on the moon by 2024. They also plan to take along the world's first female to ever step foot on the moon. However, given how devastating a year 2020 was, it's likely that these plans will be pushed back a bit. There hasn't been any official word from NASA just yet, but it seems like another moon landing is nearing the bottom of their to-do list. As it stands, some experts say we should not expect another landing any time before the year 2028. However, it's still a major goal for NASA, as they also work to send humans to Mars in the coming years. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.